observing eight surgeries, and I'm not even a doctor yet. <laughs> the human body has fascinated me for years, and because of my endless curiosity with it, I decided that Senior Project would provide me with the perfect opportunity to allow me to observe surgeries. This process of shadowing surgeons was more than just staying in an operating room. It was learning about myself to see if this profession is what I actually want to pursue. The research I did in the fall was about the use of robots in the operating room because I had a deep concern that my dream job would be taken over by a machine once I finally got through all of my schooling. Luckily, what I discovered is that robots are great at assisting in surgery, but not performing the whole operation themselves. Being, besides being assured, my research became relevant in one of the surgeries I watched a cholecystectomy, or a laparoscopic gallbladder removal. I observed this surgery at Holy Redeemer Hospital with Dr. Janet Credit, one of the three surgeons I shadowed. This surgery was one of my favorites to watch because a high-definition camera is placed into the abdomen of the patient and the image is displayed on a large monitor. Because of this, I was able to see everything. The surgery was also particularly fascinating for me because I was able to identify a structure I had learned in my human anatomy class, the greater momentum. Recognizing the sheet of fatty material gave me so much happiness because I was able to connect something I had learned in a classroom to real life, and I felt one step closer to becoming a doctor. During the surgery, Dr. Credit let me hold the diseased gallbladder once it had been removed, still warm from being inside of the patient's body. Nothing has ever felt so right. <laughs> Shadowed was at Doyle. 
Hills Town Hospital. My experience with Dr. Vitori was very different from the other two surgeons because I didn't create a personal relationship with him. I never directly contacted him because I set up my day of observation through Brenda Bus and the head nurse at the hospital. Because of this, my day was purely observing two total knee replacements. However, these were my favorite surgeries to watch, not just because we listened to the Black Eyed Peas radio, but because Dr. Vidcoin is a very upbeat, young, enthusiastic surgeon who clearly loves what he does. The knee replacement was very aggressive, and I'll be honest, at times I did cringe a little bit because I couldn't help but imagine what that would feel like. But despite that, I am now considering becoming an orthopedic surgeon myself. I'm happy I had this discovery because a goal I set for myself was to decide if surgery is the right career for me, and if so, what specialty I'd want to choose. Another goal I set for myself that I achieved was finding three surgeons to observe. Originally, I intended to shadow five, but I quickly realized that this was an unattainable goal because the majority of surgeries happen during school hours, so I couldn't commit that time, so I adjusted my expectations. As of now, surgery is still looking like a bright future for me. Just talking to people about my experience makes me more confident because they comment on my enthusiasm and bright mood regarding the topic. So this is another selfie of me in some mint scrubs this time, and so that was at Doylestown. The next step in my project was finding a mentor and starting to plan my service piece, a tournament of the board game operation in order to raise money for the nonprofit organization Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders provides medical aid to countries where it's needed most, and surgeons and nurses and anyone goes and volunteers their time and resources to helping people in countries that need it. And I'm hoping to become a part of this organization or at least contribute to it when I'm older, so that's why I chose it. So in the first portion of my project, I decided that it wasn't necessary for me to have a mentor because I was essentially only emailing people in order to set up observations. But I knew I needed a mentor to help me with planning my project because I didn't have any experience in that field. The search was harder than I thought it was going to be. But after when one mentor didn't work out, I finally found Lisa Oswald. I'm so lucky to have had her as a mentor because she had a lot of experience with planning fundraisers and she kept me on schedule, which helped counter my tendency to procrastinate. Planning the operation tournament was the serious stretch and challenge of my project, not watching eight surgeries. What was really a challenge for me was turning a large, ominous event into small, manageable tasks. I constantly had to make myself lists and reminders, and even with that, it still felt overwhelming. Luckily, the event was a huge success, and at this point, I've raised $1,200 from Doctors Without Borders. But I couldn't have done it without the help of Mrs. Oslund, Mrs. Adams, and Mrs. Farrar, and all the donors who supported my event, including everyone from school who participated in my dress down day. Planning this event was a good learning experience for me because it taught me to keep persevering. There were numerous times I wanted to just trash the event and take the easy road of calling my dress down day my service piece. Thankfully, I didn't do that. I exercised, this, exercised the skill of keeping a commitment and carrying it out to the best of my ability. I'm thankful I had a chance to strengthen this quality in myself because it will truly be useful in the hard upcoming years of college and med medical school and life in general. Thanks to the benevolence of friends, family, and local surgeons, I was able to observe eight total surgeries with three different physicians. Then I was able to raise over $1,000 for Doctors Without Borders. This whole experience has had many ups and downs, and I've learned something during each peak and valley of the process. I'm thankful I had the opportunity to take this course, and by doing so, to be able to learn about myself in a different way that I couldn't in a regular classroom. For me, this course was invaluable because it provided me with the first real experience with surgery, which has created a lot of excitement for me, so much that I'm starting to feel better about leaving the academy. I also had the wonderful reward of giving to an organization that I believe in, and having the satisfaction of a successful event. I will take what I have learned with me and be a better person and worker because of it. This, because of my recent injury, I will soon experience what it is like to be on the other side of the scalpel. This is a silver lining on my injury because it will allow me to further, to learn further about how to be a great physician
because I'll have the ability to be more empathetic with my patients. I have come to realize that there is a learning opportunity in everything, and that you just have to find it and have the desire to pursue it. Thank you to everyone who has helped make my project a possibility. Questions for Camille, if anyone has any, I'll grab the mic. I'll come over in just one second. Okay, so, Angel, can you help? Thank you. Uh, so, once you've asked your question, hopefully she'll have a chance to sort of repeat your question so everyone makes sure they hear it. Um, but any questions coming up for anyone about this amazing experience? What made you, and how long have you been interested in surgery? So the question was, how long have I been interested in surgery? I think it was around seventh grade, because in seventh grade at Oak Arbor School, if anyone knows what that is, um, <laughs> we did a human anatomy class, and we did a lot of dissections. And so I distinctly remember dissecting a pig's heart, and it was just, it was so cool. And I was like, oh my gosh. Questions? Yeah.
And I have a question as well. Um, when you're uh, when you're doing a sh you know your pro your project is titled Operation Shadow, so you're shadowing doctors. Um, more on the psychology side, is there anything you learned about uh, what personality types um, doctors have to have, the hours they run, things like that? Um, yeah. Speak to um, so the question was, what did I learn more, like psychologically, about doctors and shadowing people? I think as a doctor, you need to be able to be personable and create, be able to create a relationship with your patient that is. They, so they can trust you, and they feel that you do know what you're doing, but also, oops, sorry, but also friendly, because if you have a really mean surgeon, I feel like you wouldn't feel very comfortable with that, so. Absolutely. Very good. Final question. Oh, no. Okay. So let's give her another round of applause.